hello everyone welcome to my channel so today we are going to be covering a cake with fondant yes fondant and this is my fondant here this should be about um how many cages you can i can't remember if i remember i'll put it in the description box so the recipe for the fondant will be out soon you can use it for any weather whether it's raining whether it's sunny whether it's dry season you can use it for any weather so i'll be using this fondant to cover our cake so this is how i need my fondant some persons will need their fondant with all power with all might but um you just uh, you just need a um, little strain just pull and you bring it in you pull and you bring it in you pull and you bring it in just easy steps on how to need your fondant to make it um a bit perfect for you to work with and to also see that it's uh, elastic at least we need something that is stretchy not breaking not strong and stiff you know what i'm talking about we just need a stable um soft not too soft not too strong but a stretchy fondant to work with so you can see my daughter here she said she wants to help me with the work i had and how to cut a bit of fondant for her to work with you can see how she's needing her fondant she wants to do what mommy's doing but her hands are not yet matured for this fondant and maybe i could have given her a little bit not this exact size a little bit fondant but she's trying like i really see the zeal in her to 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 work i see it in her so i don't need to discourage her but encourage her okay so i'll be using this particular fondant to cover my cake and i'm doing a 3d covering a 3d covering which is you go around the cake with fondant then you cover the top then you capsize or turn it over and that's how you do your 3d so this is the cake i'm working with it's a 10 inch 10 inches cake and it's for the six um, centimeter round yeah for the six so let's start working with this now so right now we're going to start the work and you have to make sure your work surface is clean 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 free from any particles dead whatever it may be make sure your work surface is clean whether you're using colored fondant or white fondant make sure it's clean understand so we are doing um, the cylinder shape so this is how i'll roll my fondant first to give it this shape before i start with my rolling pin to extend it longer than this so because we are doing like um, a rectangle shape rolling so this is what we do first if i'm doing a round covering i will go round but i'm doing a rectangle shape that's why i have to go like like a sausage in the stand so i must use um corn flour or icing sugar to, to put on my work surface and on my fondant I noticed that the one I rolled out earlier on became too flat for me and I don't want to use a flat fondant I want to use a thick fondant that's why I had to add more fondant to the one I brought out earlier on so that I can get a thick uh, fondant to put on my cake the reason why you should not use a thin fondant to cover your cake is because the thin fondant will show a lot of imperfection and it will bring out um, a lot of uh, things that you're trying to hide <laughs> and to bring it out so you don't think for that it makes your cake come out awesome it makes it come out beautiful I hope you understand what I'm saying. The tin fondant, I know that some person do use tin fondant to cover a cake. I don't know how they do it and the cake still comes out fine. But to me, I've worked with the two of them, tin fondant and the thick fondant. The both of them, you can't really, you can't say the, the tin fondant is better than the thick fondant. No, no, no. The thick fondant covers some imperfections and makes your work comes out beautiful and neat. So when you are doing your 3D covering, 
In fact, with the 3D covering, it makes it come out very well. When you turn it upside down and you want to now trim, it makes it come out very well. So right now, I'm using the measurement tape to measure my road foam down to see if I've gotten my 46 centimeter. And it's also good to take out bubbles with a tiny pin like this. Take out bubbles, take them out, then use corn flour or rising sugar and put on top of those bubbles. They will all cover up. So this is how I do. See, I found out that there's no more bubbles on my fondants. I don't want anything bulging out after I finish putting them on the cake. Ah, oh, it's so stressful seeing bubbles on your cake. That means I have to take everything out, you know. So I want to make sure I get rid of all the bubbles, make sure my fondant is smooth, neat, clean, and the exact measurements before I put it on the cake. So right now, I'm going to be putting the fondant on the cake gradually and as I put, I smooth it on the cake with my hands. I just rub it gently, rub it gently in order for the fondant to stick to the body of the cake. So I'll be using my hand first before I'll go in with my smoother. So right now I'm going to be taking out the excess fondants from the back. So that will be the back of my cake. I'm taking out the excess fondant away. You can use a sharp razor blade or a sharp knife to do that. You can even use a scissors. It's preferable. So this is the back. This is it. So I'll be joining this very soon. So right here I have uh, my paste, my edible glue made of CMC and water. It's very good. It dries faster than just ordinary water as your glue. So put it on the edges, the both edges. Then use my smoother to join them together. Just watch and see what I'm doing. Okay, so I have joined them together. You just by using your smoother to just push, push, and push till it comes out very neat. So I'll go ahead by removing this excess on the top of the cake. You can use sharp razor blade, scissors, knife, just use whatever that's sharp. So right now I'm going to be using my smoother to just smooth the body of the cake. And as I'm doing this, I'm pushing, I'm pushing it down 
to just get out some excesses away from the, the fondants. Just push or rather pull down just a little bit. And you see these excesses are going down. Meanwhile, I'm also smoothing the fondant to make sure it sticks to the body of the cake very well. So it's time for me to cover the top of the cake and um, I'm going to be rolling round. So you can see I'm going to be rolling like a donut. <laughs> oh. So before I put the fondant on the cake, I have used uh, my edible glue to rub the top of the fondant, which is the edges up, to make this uh, fondant I just placed now to stick to the other fondant, which is the fondant on the body, the edges at the top, round it. I put edible glue around it so that this up and the down can merge together easily. You get me right? <laughs> so right now I'm going to be using that board. Um, like that's what I want to do now to get my sharp edge. So I'll be using a clean board. Make sure the board is clean and um, without any mark. Like whatever mark you see on the board is what you see on the fondant so make sure it's free for many marks so i'm going to be turning this right now and i'll go to the next level make sure that your board is with corn flour or icing sugar if not it will stick to the board and your cake won't come out at all so right now i'm going to be using the tip of my smoother to just pull down pull down Pull down and smooth at the same time. I'm smoothing the body of the cake and pulling it down to make sure the up and down match together. You can see what I'm doing. See, I'm pulling it down, I'm pulling it down, and automatically it's sticking together. That's the magic. <laughs> so, right now, we are going to be trimming the excesses away. We don't need these parts. So I'll be using a pizza cutter or a knife or a razor blade. I just need something that is sharp so that I can just trim easily with it. See? You have to be careful when doing this so that you don't dent your cake. So that you don't carry this sharp object into the cake and all your work is just gone with the trick of an eye. So you have to do it very carefully. So I'm going to be using my pizza cutter and best doing this with the pizza cutter. And I move the excess away. Our sharp edge is coming to shape gradually. So I'm still going to pull again and smooth to make sure that I don't have any excess remaining. I want these edges to come out perfectly. So, at the bottom of the cake, this is the bottom of the cake, right? You know that. So, I will still trim out the excess away. So, that when I turn it over, I guess everywhere is cleaned up. That's what I'm trying to do. So, I'm going to flip it. Our edges is taking shape <laughs> and you can see that the board and the cake separated easily it didn't stick together because I really put enough uh, icing sugar or rather corn flour you know on the body of the cake and the board so that it doesn't stick so I just use my brush and just clean off all the excess icing sugar and corn flour away and our cake is ready if you watch this level and you've not subscribed, please subscribe. 